Recently, Blender Guru said that he would not recommend beginners to learn geometry nodes. And I completely agree with that, but I wanna go a little bit deeper into that specific point. So what I wanna talk about is who is geometry nodes for, who's gonna use it more often, at what point in learning Blender should you probably start learning geometry nodes, and in my opinion, the best structured way to learn that tool. So who's geometry nodes for? It's for everybody, kind of, but in varying degrees. So this is a list of a lot of the major ways that Blender is used, kind of most 3D applications, but Blender specifically, this is a ton of major uses of Blender. I ordered them just randomly. Now, I've reordered them in what my opinion is, who is going to use it more often at the top all the way to the bottom, kind of not using it much at all. I think environment artists are going to be using it the most, you could build assets that can have tons and tons of variation, then you could take that asset and then scatter it in tons and tons of different variation. Right after that, guys like me, motion graphics artists. Having the ability to iterate really quickly, build really interesting structures pretty fast and make them procedural so you can change them and having a really cool creative approach to modeling and building and animating is very, very useful and procedural tends to lean toward having a lot of expressive control. Then you have visual effects artists, modelers, specifically prototyping, because in the prototyping stage, the model doesn't have to be perfect, but it's to help you get really good ideas. So having a lot of seed values for different components of a model so we can figure out which direction this product is going to be is really, really useful. And the last one I think is going to use it a lot is 3D printing. And then after that, we have things like simulations, animation, motion tracking and compositing and texturing are gonna be using it very little. I think a lot of the really basic intermediate uses of geometry nodes, you can do those things without geometry nodes. And I would say like older or pre-geometry nodes um, tools, which means you can get really proficient in Blender for a long time before you can really need to start learning geometry nodes, which leads me to the next part. When should you start learning geometry nodes if you are someone who's probably going to benefit from it? My simple answer is whenever you feel comfortable in Blender and you're making cool things without geometry nodes. I'm a motion graphics artist and I made several hundred animations before Geometry Nodes was even launched. But I will say, once it was launched and I started learning it and getting good at it, my animations got so much better, so much more complex, and my ability to make really professional animation got much better. So if you're talking about like a hiring standpoint, doing freelance, whatever, my work got way better because I used Geometry Nodes. So when should you start learning it? So you're just now using Blender, and I recommend start learning all of the big pieces of the program, things like the modifier system, particles and hair systems, poly modeling, weight paint, all of these interesting things that all together help you build whatever the things that you wanna build in the program. Get pretty proficient at them. You don't have to be a pro. You don't even have to be like a really proficient amateur. Just understand them and get to a point where you're not relying on tutorials in order to make the things that you are coming up with in your head or wanting to see and do from your references. I'd say once you're at that point, I think you will have enough knowledge to comfortably step into using geometry nodes. Okay, so if you are a beginner in geometry nodes, how would I recommend you structure how to learn this program? Because it can be very, very complicated. Now, like I said, getting really good at Blender and learning all of the bigger basic tools, I think is really important before you start learning geometry nodes, mostly because I like to look at the beginning portion of learning geometry nodes as a way to replace those tasks that we used to do outside of geometry nodes that sometimes aren't procedural. Things like displacement, face selection, Boolean, wireframe, all of those things can actually be done within the geometry nodes workspace, keeping them in that same workspace, and they're all procedural and way more powerful done within geometry nodes rather than outside using other tools. So with that idea, it's a great way to structure how you research your daily learning. There's two ways to kind of learn Blender. There's you're watching tutorials, courses, you know, video format of learning. You're watching someone show you how to make a thing. And in this case, you're watching geometry notes tutorials. The other way, which is just Googling and researching things. So since we have this structure of, okay, I want to make a wireframe or I want to do a displacement, you'll look up how to do displacement in geometry nodes and you will probably go on Reddit and you will find a screenshot of a node tree. I think as a beginner, there's absolutely nothing wrong with looking at a screenshot of a node tree and going, okay, let me just copy what they're doing 
and then see how that works. That is what almost everyone who's good at geometry nodes has done at a certain point. And even if you're doing it and you don't know why each node does what, still do it. I think it's very beneficial to just get repetition going and learning all these nodes and how they work together. Once you do that a bunch of times, you will start getting it along with watching courses and tutorials. So with that idea of going, okay, well, I probably will be looking at a lot of screenshots of node trees that I don't understand, but I'm gonna copy them and I'm gonna learn how to use them. In this video, I want to provide a ton of those screenshots of those basic tasks like displacement and booleans and wireframes and all of that. So, so let's look at how a bunch of those tasks work and the project files I am gonna give you guys for completely free on Patreon. You don't need a Patreon account to download them. That's just where it's going. You can click on it, download the project files and open them up if you ever need sort of a cheat code or you know a cheat list of how to do certain things when you are starting to learn the program. So let me show you how a lot of those basic tools are made. All right, let's start with something we all know, an array. These nodes make an array. There's actually a couple ways to do that in geometry nodes, but it starts with just a line that has five places to add an object. And then when we plug them all together, we get an array that allows you to have some customizability. So play around with all of these nodes and see what happens. And then obviously you can play with the object that we are arraying as well. So this is a group of random cubes that I have set up to show you how Booleans work. Now, if I mute the Boolean, this is all of the intersection. We have all of these objects right here that are intersecting together. And if I'm looking at the wireframe, we're going, oh, okay. So when you're in a situation geometry nodes where you have things intersecting and you want them to Boolean, very simple. It's a mesh Boolean node. It's gonna Boolean them. It works pretty quick depending on the amount of geometry in your scene. And I will also recommend, I will also recommend that Booleans work better if the objects are at varying heights. If they're all the same height, it's not really going to work quite as well, at least not in geometry nodes. But this is Booleans. Very common thing to come across when you're building things. We need to displace. This is the set of weirdness to make displacement. You have this multiply node to show, hey, this is strength, which this is a perfect way to understand math multiply node if you're not familiar. Multiply just really says the strength of the effect, either uh, less or more of it. And you can apply this to different pieces of geometry and it will get you a noise texture displacing the object. Extruding is fun and I also made it randomly extrude with a random value node. But of course we have just a regular icosphere and then if we go ahead and bring an extrude mesh node, it'll extrude it however we want. And then this fun little magic randomness node goes, hey, randomize it. And you can have a lot of fun with randomizing the extrusion of whatever faces you're dealing with in geometry nodes. Now, insetting faces is actually kind of weird and complicated, so let's just do it right now. So you have an icosphere, and I wanna inset those faces. Well, first, we're gonna use an extrude mesh node. Now, if we were to extrude it like we did a minute ago, it's going to do that. I'm actually gonna bring the offset to zero. So it looks like there's no extrusion, but there's actually a secondary face that we created that we can access with this thing right here. So what we'll do is we'll get a scale elements node and right now it's just gonna scale the entire object. I want it to only scale that new face, the one that extruded out. I just wanna scale that. So I'll plug that into the selection and now you're seeing this insetting happening. You can see it right there. And if I, what I wanna do is delete that face that we inset so I can say only delete that secondary face that we made. So plug that into the selection and now we have some insetting happening. So it's kind of weird, but geometry nodes can feel weird quite often. And this is a great example of just like things, you just have to rewire the way you think about building things. Now there's gonna be a time when you're gonna wish you had a texture coordinate system if you're familiar with shading. So this system of nodes is what we just looked at in terms of how to displace. If you need some mapping, then you'll plug in vector math nodes. So in order to get them to work, I'm gonna go ahead and delete them and get an A. We'll get vector math, and I know I'm gonna want one stretch and squash and scale up the texture. The other one, I just wanna be able to move it around like a position. So we're gonna get two vector math nodes, but it's not going to work because it needs position information. Very easy, we need a position node. So plug those into each other right into the vector. So this one, I'm just going to have to move on the X and the Y, that texture, and of course is going up and down. So you have just this guy moving around that you can animate. Now, I want this one set to multiply. What he's going to do is actually take the place of this multiply in, effectively, but also 
he is going to squash that texture or we can stretch out this texture using the multiply as well on the X, Y, and the Z, giving you that texture coordinate system that you want. Now, selecting individual or groups of faces is going to take a little bit of, of, of rewiring your brain and how you think of it. In geometry nodes, you can't just go into edit mode and go, I want this, I'm gonna select this face, select this face. You have to do it, of course, through nodes and accessing them. And it's learning every face has a number assigned to it, and that's called the index. So starts at zero and zero, one, two, three, four, five, and goes all the way up, depending on however many faces you want, if you want to select an individual one. So using this system of nodes, it'll allow you to select a face. In this case, I told it I want to select face number 24. So I'm saying using a math node, I want to access indexes. He just is another way of using integers instead of that. We're selecting different faces based on their number, and then it has this fun little epsilon or espelon to get the ones around it too. So there's actually, once you get into this, there's a different, lots of different ways to go about selecting faces. This is the sort of the beginning thought process of doing it, the very basic singular face way of doing it, but knowing, okay, faces have indexes, points have indexes, all of these indexes, you'll have to be able to learn how to access. And the last one is something I've done over and over and over on the channel, just because wireframes are really used quite often in motion graphics. It's just this fun little string of nodes. If we go ahead and delete them all, we can look at how it works. So you just have an icosphere here, and then I'm gonna convert it to curves like that. Now we need to convert it back to a mesh and then use a curved circle to say how wide that tube is going to be. Now we have a wireframe. That is all a bunch of little systems that as a beginner, you're probably gonna to wanna to know how to do in order to build things that you wanna build. So you can always refer back to these project files that are on the Patreon, download them, open them up, or just simply Google them. These are not difficult processes to find on the internet. So there you go. Hopefully this answers the question for you. Should I learn it? When should I learn it? If it's for me? whatever those questions might be. I hope this video was beneficial for learning that. Again, you can get that whole collection of things on Patreon completely for free if you want. And if you wanna sign up, I have a lot of really, really cool exclusive content on the Patreon if you wanna check it out. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.